Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you how to develop simple Twinket 3 project. So let's begin. Now if you have successfully installed your Twinket 3, to open it, navigate to your system tray. Once you see this square icon, you can right click and you can click on Twinket XAE. So this is the engineering tool that we will use most of the time to configure back of PLC. Once you are here, click on new project and make sure you navigate to Twinket projects and give it a name for your project. And you can click OK. Now that we have successfully created our Twinket project, let's begin with remote device connection. Now, this engineering tool you see in front of the screen is running on my laptop. And I also have a PLC connected to this laptop. So in order for me to configure the PLC, I have to establish a communication from this laptop to the PLC. For me to do that, I can click on system, click on choose target, and I can click on search internet. Now I can start by clicking broadcast search. So choose your network adapters. It's going to be this one. Now I've managed to find the PLC, which is this one. So once I select this, you have to make sure that you change it to IP address and click on add route. Now once you are here, by default, for all back of PLC when you come from the factory, the default password will be number one. Okay. Once you see the X icon, uh, you can click close and you can double click on the PLCs. So now we have successfully connected to the remote system. Now if you see on top, uh, there will be a target system which is listed here. It shows that the connection is now running properly. Now let's continue with scanning the IOs. But before we scan the IO, it's very important for you to understand uh, what are the different modes available in Twinket. So let's talk about modes. There are two modes that you will work with most of the time. Um, the first one is a run mode, which is the green color. And the second one is a config mode, which is a blue color. So for me to scan the I.O. Uh, terminals, I have to make sure that I click on config mode. So now I can click OK. So now the system is switching to config mode. Now once I'm here, I can click on device, right click and click scan. And just click yes. And click OK. Yes. Okay, so now we have successfully uh, scanned the I.O. So let's just have a look on the different terminals that we have in here. So now the first couple that I have is uh, EK1101. And uh, the next one I have EL1012, which is um, digital input with two channels. And the next one I have EL2004, which is digital output with four channels. So traditionally, uh, when you have a field device connected to the I.O. terminals, you need to do continuity test. The idea behind it is to verify that current will flow from your sensor to your terminal. However, in Twinket, there's a feature that will help you to test each of the field device connected to the terminals without a multimeter or writing any programs. So in order for you to use the feature, you have to go to the terminals. So now for example, I have uh, terminal two, which is a digital input with two channels. And um, I can expand and make sure I click on channel one, and click on input. Now from here, I have to click on online. 
So with the config mode being selected and also the free run being toggled, I can now try to manually trigger uh, my inputs. Now if I do this, I should be able to see some changes in the graph. Okay, and then now I can do it on a second channel. Okay, now it is working perfectly. And uh, let's go ahead and do it on my uh, digital output channel. So I have four of them. I'll just uh, test one of them. So now if I put one, I should be able to see some LEDs turning on on my terminals. Okay, assuming that everything is working uh, successfully, now we can go ahead to PLC uh, to create our PLC project. So now you can navigate to your PLC, right click and add new item. Um, you can click on standard PLC project. Now you can uh, give a name of your PLC project. Now, once you have successfully created your PLC project, you will see all of the different folders which is uh, created for you because you managed to select the standard templates. And if you expand pure use, you will uh, by default have a main program. So this will be the area whereby we want to write all of the programs. But for now, we are going to create a global variables. Um, you can give it a name, but I'll just leave it by default. Now click open. Now in here, I can start by declaring uh, the input and output that I have. So recall that I have uh, two digital inputs and four digital outputs. So I'm going to declare uh, all of them in my global variables. Because this is an input, so we use percentage i. And this is standards, and of course, because it's a, uh, a digital, you have poss two possibility. We use a boolean. Now I can copy and paste, so I can just change it a name. So this will be number one. This will be number two. Okay. Now the next one I have. Uh, four digital outputs, so let's declare them. And put one, add. Now, because this is an output, we can use percentage Q. The data type still remains the same, which is Boolean. Add four of them, um, you can just change the name. You can also put a comment if you want. For example, if you have a lot of uh, different variables, so that you will be, it will make it easy for you to refer on later on. Once we have finished with that, uh, what we can do now is we can try to compile um, the variable that we have write everything in the PLC. So essentially the idea of uh, compiling is you want to be able to check for any errors. So if there's no errors, the PLC will create an instance for us. So with this instance, we can do a mapping from our PLC to our IOs. So now in order for you to do the compiling, uh, you can click on build and build solution. So if there's any syntax error, it will be written on the bottom and you will get an error. However, I don't get any, it's good. 
So now the PSC have successfully created an instance for me. If you can see here, I can expand. I can see an inputs. I have two inputs and uh, four outputs. So now I can navigate to I/O sections and just double click here. Click on variable link to and double click on digital input one. And I can do the same on my channel two. So that's the first way of doing it. However, if you, for example, if you have a lot of IOs and you want to make it faster, you can click here and expand from the bottom to the top. Then you can click here and shift. Click on the last output, right click, change link. Now you can hit enter. Now it has managed to link all the variables to the my IO. So now this is very important. Once we have finished with the mapping, it's always a good practice that you click on activate configuration. So this way the PLC will update the latest configuration based on whatever that you have done in here. Now the system is asking whether we want to go to run mode. Yes, you want to go. So a run mode is always important if you want to run your project, a PLC code or whatever that you write in the PLC section if you want to be able to run it. Uh, it's always very important for you to go to run mode. And then once we have successfully go to run mode, we can go online to the PLCs. So let's go back to here and click uh, go online. Now if I manually trigger the IO, I should be able to see status from here instead of from the IOs. Okay, now I managed to get a signal from digital input one. Now I will trigger uh, digital input two. Okay, very good. Now, the next one we have four of the digital output. So I can just click here to trigger it. So say if I have a lamp connected to the terminals, I should be able to see the lamp turning on. So now that we have managed to declare the variables. Let's just try to write a simple logic in our program editor. So in here, you can start by calling all the variables that we have declared before. So in order for you to do that, you can just type in the name of the global variables. So in this case, you use GVL and you put a dot and you can write there. You can select all of the different variables. So now I can click on digital out one to gbl dot table so uh, by default this program um, the language selected is a structured text so this command that i'm doing here is actually in a form of structured text so for structured text it always start with the output and then followed by the input so when i write like this it means that uh, the output will always follow the status of the input so if i trigger the input i will be able to see the changes in the output. So now I can do a compile again, build and rebuild solution. Now I can click login. Login with online change, click OK. Now I'll try to manually trigger digital input one and I should be able to see some changes in digital output one. So trigger one, Okay, now we can see some changes. Now that's how you start a simple project in Twinket. Thank you.